If you are new here, perhaps you won't know just how much I like the Coruscant Guard gunship. I love it, even the colour. I would like LEGO to make a regular gunship next, just for everyone who doesn't yet own one, but I really like the fact that they chose to have a dark red gunship. I really like dark red. I mean, it does blend in with the wall behind me, but also some of the features for this. Now, that being said, not everything is perfect with this set, especially when it comes to the doors on the side. Both of the doors aren't really that great. So on this side of the gunship that you're currently seeing, I have made 10 modifications which improve either the way the gunship looks, adds a feature to the gunship and some sort of function, or just increases the strength of the model because some parts are very, very fragile. And especially looking at this door at the front, pieces tend to pop off in every direction if you're not careful. So I think the first thing we'll be taking a look at is those double doors that I mentioned in the thumbnail because, well, that is one of the best things about this. And that also leads on to the next view. So without further ado, let's take a look at the original doors. In fact, before we get to the double doors, there is a change on the back. If you've spotted it, you've definitely got sharper eyes than I do. But right here, the axle that's holding in the wings has been switched out rather than the play gray one that gets stuck in there. I've actually gone with this dark gray one with the cap on the end and added a one brick long stopper to them. I'm not quite sure on the technical terms for these Technic elements, but what that allows me to do is just grab the axle and pull it out and the wing will drop down, but that just makes it a lot easier to get the wings in and out. And because of the two brick long hole that's this side, you can just leave that in until you put the wings back on. It makes it so much easier for getting the wings on and off. And especially if you want to access these doors for camera or if you're playing along with your gunship and just want to get a few more clones in there, it's a massive help. So we'll take a look at the doors in a second, but I have done this on both sides. This is in fact the only, oh no, there is one more that we'll get to in a second, but it's one of the only things I've actually done on both sides. So we can put the wings away. We'll be taking a look at them later. I have changed the turret on one side. And before we get to the doors, we see our second change, very, very simple change. Just added two of these white grill tiles and they're just to represent the little missiles at the top. We don't want anything sticking out. We'll keep the top of the ship quite flush and smooth. So all I've done is added these two grill tiles to represent the three rockets that would be sticking out the top. They don't work as well in the middle. Perhaps if you had a black jumper tile here, just to center them, that might be a bit better. But I think it looks really, really cool. And again, it's quite an easy addition. So finally, taking a look at the doors, you've all waited long enough. It's like two, three minutes into the video, but that is long enough. The old Lego doors open and well, they half open. You can't really see much in there and you're missing out on all of this room. Now, I'm pretty sure they've made this pin so easy to clip in and out just for that reason. And they've actually marked off which hole it goes in. You can see all the other Technic holes are covered beside the one that is used. So it's not impossible to get in, but it's also not accurate. This half of the door should be opening forward as we see that one time in the Clone Wars. And actually we also saw it in the Mandalorian, which if you weren't aware is where the pilots come from. You see two shock troopers in the Mandalorian and we've seen in Clone Wars shock troopers driving the police vehicles and everything else. So it shouldn't be much of a surprise for the shock troopers to be driving it. Here I've got a plane phase two, perhaps a shock trooper in training, piloting it up there. And then I've also whacked in Padme who does come in the set. And I feel like I just had to show her off because it's an amazing figure that you get with the gunship. But I would like to fix this on the door. And that is why I have created the double door on the other side. You can see I've been swooshing it around this whole intro and now finally the doors are opening themselves when you turn it around on the desk. So they're not the most secure, they are pretty secure. You can give it quite a wobble before it falls off. That is just because the doors are each on only one hinge. But I feel like this front door is a lot stronger than the back door, even though it's on the less secure hinge and can wobble around. As you can see, I think this looks amazing. You've already seen it in the thumbnail. This is my favorite change and there are a few others on the inside and you can actually, with all these changes, 
fit four troopers in each side. At least that's what I fit. I'm sure if you were standing them up, you might be able to fit seven or eight. But another change I would make to your gunship is buying the battle pack because you get so many other troopers, you get a mix of Coruscant Guard and the regular Shinies, and that helps to boost it. And especially if you're getting this with the Grogu Bark Speeder Escape, it just adds to the scene and you can probably display them on your shelf together because they would look really, really cool. Now the outside pattern on the doors has stayed pretty much the same. I've extended this slope forward one, just so when the door is shut, it covers that other gray bit on the side, which was a little bit annoying. You could just see it through the corner of it. So I have pushed that out one further, but it's quite easy to open and shut. I've also reinforced this back door with another hinge clip on this side. I can turn it around to show you. We've got two hinges now holding the bottom of the door. It's not necessary, it's just because there was an extra space for one and I thought, well, I've got enough of these in my collection. Why not use one to increase the stability of the door? My camera is really not liking this for some reason, so do forgive me for all the blurriness and out of focus. I'm not really sure what's happening. And you can also see on the interior, there is a handlebar right at the top for the clones or the Jedi to hold onto. We see them in the actual gunship and it's something that Lego haven't built here just because it does restrict the height a bit. You can see the four clones are sitting down. You don't really get the space to stand them up with the handlebar. So perhaps that's why Lego haven't given the handlebar to the gunship, but it's not a problem for me. As I said, I've got these four sat down and you probably could just bend them over a little bit and still get them all standing up. But behind them, you actually get the speed up from the battle pack. Well, kind of the speed up from the battle pack. If I was to remove these four clones, you'll definitely be able to see it a bit better. So let's just do that and get these out of the way. And then you'll be able to see a modified 2024 battle pack. And I can't really say that anymore because we're getting a second Mandalorian battle, well, a first Mandalorian battle pack, but a second 2024 battle pack. So it's now the 2024 clone and droids battle pack, I guess. But this speeder does fit quite nicely in there. It's almost as if they've made room for it. The only modification that needs to be made is removing the stud shooters on the side. The stud shooters do not fit in here. There's only a four stud whip and it's about four and a half studs with the stud shooters. So I've just rounded it off with a round one by two and also that round tile on top. You can create anything you like. You probably even add a little engine there and then this can slot into that gap and also then come out of the back like you'd expect it. It's short enough to fit through that gap. I'm sure it definitely wouldn't be fitting with any clone troopers on the front, but it's quite nice if you do end up getting the battle pack with the gunship. As I said, it gets you a bunch of extra clone troopers. One of them is missing their helmet, but not only does it get you a few extra clone troopers, it also gets you a speed up for the gunship. And then you can recreate some Clone Wars scenes with all the droids that you'd get. If you can fit four clones in each side, that's two battle packs. Probably use some of the pieces from the speeder to modify it. You do get some round one by twos in the speeder, so you could definitely make use of them. And for tiles, you could probably steal some from the tri droid or something like that. Add some slopes on it rather than anything else. And that would be really, really cool. The only other modification I've made to the interior, again, keen-eyed LEGO fans might have already spot this. You can see the other side is all tiled off and it's not really great when you want to fit clones in here. So I've taken the recommendation of pretty much everyone that's reviewed the set, including myself, and put some studded plates down. I think this is perfect. You've still got the tiles in the middle for the speeder. If you want to put the speeder the other way around and stop it, flying around when you're swooshing the model. You can even clip it in on them for studs. Perhaps that is the preferred way for many people and you could definitely get some blasters on the back still. And that means when you're picking up the gunship, wobbling it around, the bark speeder isn't going anywhere. So that is a very, very nice feature. Once again, you can fit up to four clones sat down, probably about seven or eight standing up if you include the space that's needed for the doors. Or if you want to try and pack it like I did and fit 30 plus clones in here, you can definitely still fit at least 20 of them 
with this modification, perhaps even a bit more sturdy than we did. Now we are taking a look away from the doors. I've shown you the doors. We've got the plates at the bottom, the speeder, the hand rails, the extra play friendly axle that I've equipped. We've also got this grill piece, which is meant to represent the missiles, the battle pack for the extra minifigures. I think we've only got three more things left to show. So before we clip on the wings and I'll show you what I've done to improve the turret, we're actually going to look at the front of the ship here. You can see I have modified slightly the actual door just to make it a bit lighter to lift so that it's not pulling itself down because if I lift the other door, what you'll notice is it does tend to lower itself quite quickly compared to the other one. You can see I lift that and now it's slowly, slowly going down and dropping. Whereas if we turn back to the other one that's been open for like a minute now, it's still holding itself up, which is really, really cool. It does lower a little bit, but then it gets to a point where it stays. And as you can see, it's just much, much lighter than the other one, but it's also easier to pop off because there's nothing reinforcing it onto the Technic beams here. So you can just pop it off and access the inside a lot, lot easier. And that is where we have our clone command post. This is a modified version of the one we got in the advent. And of course, you can include a 212 for perhaps Commander Fox because that works on a command post, Commander Fox. But it's a little thinner than the one in the advent. As you can see, I've just taken a stud off. It weren't really necessary. And I think it makes a pretty cool addition to this gunship. You can definitely also get the one from the battle pack. And there's enough room to fit one or two of them in here as well as a broken up speeder or a stap that they've perhaps stolen to go along with the speeder. And I think having something like this in the front would have made sense. A lot of my comments have also pointed out they could have got a med bay in here or some sort of health equipment for the clones because that is typically what you'd find in a gunship. There would be something to carry the injured clones back aboard the gunship. And you could have definitely fit two of them Lego City stretchers in the front here. So that is another option. And before we put the door on, the penultimate change I made to the gunship is one you need to make right now. At least if you do have this dark red slope, because you'll see on this side that there's just that cheese slope on the side. So if you are trying to lift up the doors and you push too hard on the left. Well, that gray piece that's holding down the Technic beam comes up easier than the door has to open. So what I've done to secure that and make sure that rarely happens, I'm not quite sure it's a permanent fix, you'll have to let me know if you try this yourself, is include the slope because you can push as high as you want and it starts to pop off the actual cockpits rather than the plate that's holding itself down. So that extra stud of grip just gives it the clutch power needed to hold down any force applied to it. And that also enables both of these to remain sturdy and stop the door from popping off in the first place. So you don't even need any of the reinforced studs that were on it beforehand. It's a bit tricky trying to get the door back on, but once you've done it a few times, you sort of know the pattern and are able to do it roughly blindfolded. I mean, I can't see anything, so hopefully you were able to see something. As I said with the doors, spinning it around does open this back door. Perhaps what you could do is move this tile over one and when the doors are shut, you can use this to hold the both in place because none of them are going anywhere with that tile on them. If you give it a little shake and make sure you can wobble it around, the doors are not opening. Now, as for the bar on the inside, I'll give you a closer look before we go on to the turret modification. It's just two of these four long bars with a lightsaber in the middle, basically a double bladed gray lightsaber. And then we've got the droid hands, droid necks on the end with a round one by two plate on each side. And that's what enables it to clip to the top. If I show you how to clip it in as well, that might be a bit helpful. And once again, if you want to know how the doors are put together, definitely let me know and that will be a future video. So it's a lot easier with two hands. Don't try it with one yourself if you've got your other hand free and you just clip the plates in the top bit here, which as I said, a lot easier with two hands. Perhaps the plates are a bit too far down for this side of the gunship and the actual arms or the neck pieces go in these gaps between each of the Technic holes. So you can see there is one side in 
and then to clip in the other side and then just make sure the bar is in the middle of the two otherwise it will be pulling out the other side so it looks a bit complicated but as i said this is one hand it's actually fairly straightforward once you know what you're doing and i think it's definitely a very very good addition i'll leave this side as it is for now just in case you would like to see how to put it together but i'll probably end up making some instructions on that so keep your eye out for that i've actually put this in the wrong way so putting the pin in i think i did it three from the end here for the double doors and that is really the easiest way to do it another modification i made to the wings is actually on the back here you can see that there is a well actually you probably can't see with how blur it is but you could hopefully eventually see that there is a plate over here that does catch the technic pin at the back i'm not sure what's happening with the camera today it's really not on our side but you have to take my word for it there is a pin over there with the panel that when the door is attempting to close fully it catches on that piece so what i've done is moved it out a bit and added another panel behind it so that when the door's shut the panel isn't pushing up against the technic piece and it's literally half a plate's width on the outside so that is another fix but now let's take a look at the gunship wings now i know some of you are thinking well if I fix the turrets on the wings, how comes there's still the stud shooters? Personally, I'm not a fan of stud shooters. I wouldn't go out of my way to add them to a set, but they also don't bother me as much as the average LEGO Star Wars fan. The biggest problem I had was that the turrets on the original gunship couldn't spin around. Now, okay, perhaps they're not shooting at their self, but the fact that they are able to shoot in different directions it's not a case of accuracy, it's just an awesome play feature to be able to fire the turrets behind any ships trying to follow them. It does just make sense rather than having this whimsy little blaster back here. So what I've done is included a 4x4 rotating panel just on the underneath and that is in place of the 4x4 plate. There's nothing else that I've added here, no fancy brickwork or nothing. I've just taken the round 4x4, added it to the rotating panel and that is all I've had to do because if you look on the other side it is fixed and it's just not as fun a play feature as if you had a rotating cannon on the wings. I think LEGO should definitely consider doing this in the next gunship because it's just really really fun though saying that I'd love to get an Attack of the Clones gunship that actually has the gunner pods separate and clones can fit inside if you want so perhaps that would be the better choice. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you do want the instructions and a step-by-step -step how I built these double doors, let me know. I'll make that another video because there are a few handy different things that I've switched around. Most of it's easy, like the slope you saw at the front and just changing the axles, but the double doors are definitely the hardest parts. Perhaps I can even whack up instructions for free on Rebrickball if that would help. So let me know down in the comments what your favourite modification to this gunship that I made today is. And don't forget to like if you did enjoy the video, subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. And as always, may the bricks be with you.